Good morning. Today we will be covering the Supreme Court Justice Robert e. Jackson's dissent on the result of the Supreme Court case Cormassu v. United States. First, a little backstory on Robert Jackson. He was born in Spring Creek, Pennsylvania in 1892. He started his first law practice at the age of 21 in Jamestown. He was sworn in as a Supreme Court Justice on July 11, 1941. He served as a Chief U.S. Prosecutor for the Nuremberg Trials in 1945. He also wrote down his opinions for over 300 Supreme Court cases he oversaw, including Brown v. the Board of Education. A little background to the case itself. On February 19, 1942, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt issued Executive Order 9066, which granted the United States military the authority to evacuate Asian Americans of Japanese ancestry from the West Coast. They were then relocated into internment camps in Nevada, California, and other surrounding states. Fred Kormasu, an American-born citizen of Japanese descent, refused to leave his house in California. He was convicted of a crime, however, through the appeal process, his case did reach the Supreme Court by 1944. The Supreme Court ruled 6-3 to three in favor of his conviction. In his dissent, Robert Jackson makes the argument that the situation surrounding the internment orders were not valid reasoning to strip Kormasu and other Japanese Americans from their civil rights. He is quoted, and it is said, if a military commander has a reasonable military grounds for promulgating the order, they are constitutional and become law, and the court is required to enforce them. There are several reasons why I cannot subscribe to this doctrine. Jackson viewed the ruling as a government's disregard for the Fifth Amendment, and in a sense, making the civilians of the Japanese descent answer for the attacks on Pearl Harbor. However, in the latter half of the document, he does acknowledge that the military would have the power to incarcerate civilians during a time of war, in the event neither the executive branch nor the courts oppose such action. Robert Jackson's views of freedom are illustrated in the following quote. It would be impracticable and dangerous idealism to expect or insist that any specific military command in an area of probable operation will conform to conventional tests of constitutionality.